Welcome to the Mindset Mechanics Podcast with Juan and Ladybug Jenkins. It's not too late to find, face, and fix what's stalling you. The shop is open, so pull on in. Welcome to Mechanical Monday. You are in the shop. I'm Ladybug. And I am Juan Jenkins. And we are your Mindset Mechanics. Reminding you that it's not too late to find, face, and fix what's stalling you. And when you do that, acceleration is inevitable. In today's episode titled, Do You Have a Spare? We're going to discuss the challenges, the challenges of cheating. So Ladybug, why don't you tell the crew listening what we mean? Yes, sir. Cheating is defined as the act of being unfaithful to a spouse or other committed partner. It typically means engaging in sexual or romantic relations with a person other than your significant other and breaking a commitment or promise by performing that act. So it also means to act dishonestly or unfairly in order to gain an advantage. So um, a good example of that is meeting someone and that person is married and they lie and say that they aren't married or they say they are separated or, you know, the ever popular, my, my wife and I don't even sleep in the same bed anymore. So, Jay, can you give the crew listening an example of what cheating looks like in real life? Of course. Uh, let's meet Travis. He's a married father of two who is a regional manager at his bank. He is asked to train Dana, a candidate for promotion, um, to assistant manager who happens to be very attractive. Mm. She is competent and professional, but she becomes very flirtatious uh, when they're alone. He jokingly discourages her, but doesn't really put his foot down. So Travis honestly enjoys the attention. He doesn't feel as desired or important since his children came along. So he lets the young lady flirt, especially since she doesn't do it around others. <laughs> okay, so when Dana's birthday comes, he offers her offers to take her to lunch. Uh, he decides that it isn't unusual, but he does take her to a restaurant that's pretty expensive for a work lunch. They have some wine and lunch and start to really talk and laugh and everything. Uh, they discuss some of the broken processes at work and how they could improve security at the bank. Travis explains that he uh, tried to get the bank to fix some of the processes, but got ignored by upper management. Dana jokes that they would probably have to get robbed to fix anything in Travis Labs. Over the next few weeks, Travis becomes close to completing Dana's training. Uh, she invites him to her place one night after work, and he refuses. Uh, it obviously upsets her, and she not only stops flirting, but she becomes cold towards him. She begins to not only um, come in late every day and push back when he tries to give her any uh, direction. She does all of this in front of other employees. So now Travis realized that she will not make a good assistant manager with her behavior. Mm. Right. So he starts to look more closely at her reports and they aren't even thorough at all. <laughs> all right. So uh, now he's wrestling with recommending her, but he feels a little compromised because of all the flirting that was going on between them. Mm. So he comes in early to prepare for a meeting with the district managers about promoting Dana. Uh, he su he's surprised to find them sitting in his office waiting for him. And he also sees the head of HR and right next to uh, her is Dana crying. Mm. <clears throat> right. The head of HR explains that Dana feels sexually harassed and that Travis has created a hostile work environment. Mm. Travis asked why Dana waited all these weeks to say anything if she felt so uncomfortable. Right, mm -hmm. Dana now says that she was afraid that she wouldn't get the promotion if she didn't let him flirt. <laughs> right? So, but after he asked her to go to her place, she declined 
And he started complaining about her quality of work. So she felt that she had to say something to also protect the bank since Travis kept talking about weak spots in the bank, security processes, and how he could rob them easily. <gasps> so, right, so Travis's floor at this point, he says that he feels blindsided and would like a moment to gather his thoughts and respond. The district manager agrees. He informs Travis that he is now on a three-day administrative leave and they will meet again when it's over. So what do you think? Wow. <laughs> that is wild. So Great. now he asked to go to her place and she yeah. refused. Yeah. But that, that's not what actually happened. No. He laughed at a joke, and we go from laughing at a joke to threatening repeatedly to rob the bank. Mm -hmm. You see, you see how to, but anyway, well... My first thought, considering that, is that Travis has really stepped in it. But that is a, that's the thing with cheating, though. People think you have to be naked at a hotel to be unfaithful. But the truth is, if you wouldn't do it or say it in front of your husband or wife, you know, you're probably in the wrong. And that's why we have to be so careful, especially in this day and age, you know, if, if people have, I understand having security on your phones, you have codes and you have locks and you have to use your face print or your fingerprint and all of that. But if you are hiding things mm -hmm. in your phone, things that you don't want your spouse to see, if you draw back when they come near you when your phone is in your hand or you have them locked out, I, I don't know. So, but anyway, let's stay on this story, this uh, cheating journey. So, Tell us, Jay, what happened to Travis, man? Okay, so he spent that first day hanging out at the gym and park and went home like everything was good. Mm. The next day, he left the house and came back home like it was a regular work day. <laughs> right? So finally, <laughs> that night after his wife put the children to bed, he told her everything. Mm. Obviously, she was hurt and unhappy, yeah. but she helped him come up with a strategy. It sounded weird to him, but he was at a loss at this point. When he finally went in for the meeting, he took his wife's advice and told the truth. All of it. The flirting, the wine, the joke about robbing the bank, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. He made it clear that Dana invited him to her home and he declined. He was honest about her poor quality at work and admitted to being... Uh, distracted by her flirting. When he finished, the district managers thanked him for his honesty. During his suspension, they conducted their own investigation. Mm -hmm. Right? After speaking to several employees at Travis Branch and Dana's branch, they noticed a pattern of Dana compromising her co-workers for advancement. Mm -hmm. Even her opportunity to train for assistant manager came as a result of Dana filing a uh, discrimination complaint. Management was clear on who Dana was at this point, but they wanted to see if Travis would try to cover up his indiscretions or act with integrity. They informed him that Dana was no longer employed at the bank and that he would be paid for the three days that he was suspended. Mm. He did, however, receive a reprimand for unprofessional behavior, but that was it. Wow. Okay. Oh, that was good. I like that story, Jay. Nice. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing that. So th there's a lot that I heard <laughs> that I could take away from this. So the thing with the compromise. So when this whole thing went down, you know, when he started noticing the poor work quality, the bad attitude, he didn't even feel comfortable addressing it because he compromised himself with his behavior with this girl by, you know, allowing her to flirt, flirting back, that whole thing. Then he felt like he couldn't really say anything because then it's like, well, you weren't saying all of that when you were looking into my eyes and leaning across my desk and all that. So mm -hmm. that is another reason we have to be really careful about how we conduct ourselves with the, you know, the opposite sex. But I do give Travis mad props 
for it, you know, it took him a couple of days hiding at the gym in the park and whatever he was doing. I guess he was what getting dressed and taking his bath yeah, yeah, and yeah, not, yeah, yeah, not fully dressed. Going down to the or, to the to the coffee shop and sitting. <laughs> but anyway, I do, even though it took him a minute, I do appreciate that he went to his wife and he told her everything. And I think that that is something that we miss. We don't realize that we married this person. You know, there was a time that we were passionately or so we thought, you know, in love with this person, if nothing is, but you are still a team and know every spouse is not the same, but you are going to be hard pressed to find a husband or a wife even if they're upset, even if they're angry, you know, like his wife obviously was in the story, that is not going to stand by you at least. Like even if they, they have a rolling pin or a frying pan waiting for you when it's all over, they are not going to let this person just kind of come in and pick their family apart. So I give him props for telling his wife the, it's, you know, the whole truth as it says in the story, but I appreciate his wife for coming alongside him. Mm -hmm. And because she is a woman as well, she's going to see this situation different. She understands Dana in a way that he doesn't. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so she was able to, you know, help him come up with a strategy, you know, to protect himself. And, you know, it, it sounds cliche, but, you know, the yeah. truth. They say it the truth, you know? So, um, what about the wife? Like, I don't want to glaze over this. It's great for Travis that he just got his little write-up or whatever, but I do not want to leave the people hanging. What what happened with the wife, Jay? Okay, so after he gave her the good news, they had an honest conversation about how they winded up here. Mm. He admitted that he liked the extra attention and felt invisible since the children were born. He said that he felt like he was always waiting for her to finish with the children so she could have some time for him, and it didn't seem to happen much anymore. Mm. Right, so the um, his wife let him know that she was exhausted and resented that he sat and watched her but never offered to help. Mm. Right, so they agreed to institute a date night at least once a month and to work together with the children at night so they could have at least one hour of together time each day. Nice, nice. So not surprisingly, like most situations, communication is key. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to be honest, there seems to be a gender war these days as I, especially as I delve more into the whole podcast community, I was really saddened by a lot of the stuff that I see. There's lots of complaining and there's lots of generalizations. All men are like this and all women are like this and and I'm, I'm going to get a passport and go find a wife abroad. Like, it is just really odd. But I don't hear a lot of real solutions that are rooted and grounded in forgiveness and oneness and in teamwork. And with social media, it is so easy to just kind of get off into places that you don't belong. You know, you hear, oh, they're, they're sliding in my DMs, they're married and all of that. And Things like even pornography, which is cheating, sorry guys, as well as emotional affairs, which is what was going on with, you know, Travis and Dana. And those things can be more damaging than people realize. And you're going to have people that hear this story and they're going to think it's fake and they're going to think it's far-fetched and they would be very wrong. This type of thing happens all the time. And I was blessed to work in management for a huge corporation, a nationwide corporation. And the stories, you know, you read the reports, the claims that are made. This kind of stuff happens all the time. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, we believe in the Bible around here. So no person can give you permission to sin. So even if your spouse says that the strip club or porn is fine with them, it is not fine with God. Oh, you ruffle some feathers with that one. Good. So, <laughs> so this is the part of the podcast called The Rear View Mirror. And we use the strength of hindsight to share anything that we've learned personally about this topic or anything that we want to share. So, you know, I'll be transparent. I've had my own temptations 
at work. You know, I became a nurse at a young age, working in hospitals, traveling all over the country. You had other nurses and, you know, your x-ray techs and your doctors, especially those down in the emergency room. And they're very exciting. They have all these great stories and all of these beautiful accents. And it can be very easy to be uh, distracted. And even in my personal life, you know, when I was heavy into theater, you know, I had the theater troupe when we were living in Pennsylvania. Mm. It did help me understand a lot better why celebrities cheat and divorce so easily when you are doing these scenes with people. And if you're on a set, you're there for days and weeks, you know, sometimes months, depending on, you know, the size of the project. And you were doing these scenes with people and you're standing next to them, you're looking into their eyes. And I don't know if I've ever shared with you, Jay, but do you know what actors call each other? No. Professional liars. And we say it as a joke, and, and that is one of the reasons I am no longer an actor. Anything I do in, in the realm of drama is to glorify God. Yes, professional liars. And we would say it jokingly, but that is a thing. So what is in your rear view on this one, sir? Okay, at the end of the day, it's not worth it. Frustrating your relationship with God, your spouse, and your reputation is never worth that temporary thrill. I know that's right. And at the end of the day, the grass is greener where you water it. <laughs> I definitely co-sign that. You know, 1 Corinthians ten thirteen says, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. Mm. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. That lets us know that things may pop up, but God will give us the space and the grace to handle it without dishonoring him or ourselves. Ooh, okay now, Mr. Jenkins, you said a mouth full. So thanks for stopping by the shop. We trust it helped. I am Juan. And I'm Ladybug. Jenkins is reminding you that it's not too late to find, face, and fix what's stalling you. Amen. Amen. Thanks for stopping by the shop. Tune in next Mechanical Monday so you can get the tools to find, face, and fix your mindset and accelerate your life.